Tomo News presents China's Growing Military Power. China conducts flight test of hypersonic glide vehicle. With Beijing continuing to test new weapons that could be deployed in a matter of years, pressure is growing within the U.S. to develop countermeasures. China successfully conducted a flight test this week for its new DFZF hypersonic glide vehicle, launching it atop a ballistic missile from Ujai in northern China. The vehicle, which could carry a nuclear payload, was carried to the edge of space where it separated from its launcher. Current U.S. defenses rely on satellite and ground radar to track and intercept missiles that travel along a predictable flight path. But the DFZF, which reportedly travels at speeds between Mach 5 and 10, or 3,836 to 7,680 miles per hour, may be able to defeat current defenses due to its maneuverability and high speed. From Shanxi province, the hypersonic vehicle glided to an impact range several thousand miles away in western China. This latest launch is the sixth time China has conducted a flight test of the DFZF in the past year. China now has more diesel-powered and nuclear-powered submarines than the United States. Both American and Southeast Asian officials have voiced concern about China's military buildup in the last several years. Even before the People's Republic of China's recent military and naval expansion, its submarines were regularly patrolling the Philippine Sea. China now has more submarines than Britain, Russia, and the United States, with plans to build more vessels. China's more expansive submarine program now includes lengthier excursions into the Indian Ocean. The People's Liberation Army Navy has diesel and nuclear-powered submarines and continues to develop ballistic missile submarines along with experimental vessels. The armed nuclear missile subs China is developing will be able to launch missiles that can reach Hawaii and Alaska. U.S. Navy Vice Admiral Joseph Malloy says that while the number of PLA subs has grown by leaps and bounds, their quality is inferior to that of the United States's. North Korea's drones reportedly originate from China. After meticulous looting, bloggers and netizens came to the conclusion that at least one of the North Korean drones which crashed in South Korea in early April were manufactured by a Chinese aviation company. The drones were believed to be the Sky 09P, a model made by Chinese company Taiyuan Navigation Technology. The Sky 09P UAV is 1.21 meters long and has a 1.92 meter wingspan. It can fly up to 4,000 meters. Its maximum speed is 100 kilometers per hour. The drones can be fitted with video cameras and digital SLR cameras, making them effective surveillance tools. Despite their toy-like appearance, South Korea is alarmed by these drones because they were not detected on radar. The Chinese company denied that it has sold any UAVs to the North Korean regime, but such aircraft can be purchased in the black market. Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has reportedly approved the use of Air Force planes to shoot down unmanned Chinese aircraft in Japanese airspace. Chinese aircraft recently flew near the disputed islands, known as the Senkaku in Japan and Diaoyu in China. Two Chinese Y-8 early warning planes and two Chinese H-6 bombers flew over the area between Japan's Okinawa and Miyako Island before returning to the East China Sea on Sunday for the past three days in a row. Japan scrambled fighter jets on Sunday for the third consecutive day and said it would shoot down drones entering Japanese airspace if they did not respond to warnings to leave. China responded on Saturday that shooting down Chinese drones would be considered an act of war by Beijing. China building new military base near disputed islands. China is building a large military base on islands it controls near the disputed Senkaku Island. The base is being constructed in the Nanchi Islands off the coast of China's Zhejiang province, about 300 kilometers northwest of the Japanese-controlled Senkaku Islands, which China claims and calls the Diaoyu. Several large radar installations have already been built at high points 
on the main Nanji Island. Landing strips have been paved, most likely for aircraft operating from warships or patrol vessels. More landing strips are scheduled to be built on an island near the main island in 2015. China's new base is aimed at strengthening surveillance over its self-proclaimed air defense identification zone, which covers a portion of what Japan considers its own territory in the East China Sea, and to enhance China's ability to respond militarily to threats in the region. Japan is also building a surveillance center on Yanaguni Island to monitor activity around the Senkakus, which are administered by Tokyo, but claimed by China and Taiwan. China to parade carrier killer missile in World War II victory anniversary. China is getting ready to put one of its latest military technologies on display for all the world to see on Thursday to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the defeat of Japan in World War II. At the military parade on Thursday, the People's Liberation Army will publicly display its Dongfeng 21D carrier killer missile for the first time. The missile has an estimated range of up to 400 kilometers or nearly 250 miles. The carrier killer is reportedly capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. After being launched, it goes into orbit and could travel up to 10 times the speed of sound. Its warhead is deployed in two stages and was designed to be able to take out an aircraft carrier. The display of advanced weaponry comes amid recent disputes over the islands in the South China Sea, which could be in range of China's new Dongfeng 21D missiles. According to Chinese military officials, 84% of the weapons in the parade will be on display for the first time. Chinese jets meters away from Japanese planes near disputed islands. Japan pointed the finger at China for heightening tension over the East China Sea after two pairs of Chinese jets flew extremely close to two Japanese surveillance planes in separate incidents on Saturday. The flybys took place near the disputed islands known as Senkakus in Japan and Diaoyu in China. The airspace is claimed by both Japan and China. The first incident involved a Japanese PC-3 propeller-driven reconnaissance plane and two Chinese Su-27 fighter jets. Japan said that the two Chinese jets came as close as 50 meters from its surveillance plane. On the same day, two Chinese Su-27s approached a YS-11EB, a reconnaissance plane developed by Japan. The Chinese jets were only 30 meters away from the Japanese aircraft. China accused Japan of collecting intelligence and interfering with Chinese-Russian naval exercises that lasted from May 20th to May 26th. Japan said it would continue its surveillance activities to safeguard its territory. China has reclaimed more land in the Spratleys than the Pentagon previously thought. A new Pentagon report released on Thursday says that China's reclamation efforts in the Spratly Islands has grown dramatically over the last few months at a rate far faster than earlier this year. The Spratly Islands are a string of islands in the South China Sea simultaneously claimed by China, Vietnam, Taiwan, the Philippines and Malaysia. According to the Pentagon, compared to the reclamation efforts of other claimants combined over the past 40 years, the amount of land China has reclaimed within the last two years is 17 times greater. Initial reports that China has reclaimed 2,000 acres since December 2013 are wrong, the Pentagon report says, and the real amount is around 2,900 acres. On the Fiery Cross Reef, China has built an airstrip, and at many of the reclamation sites in the Spratlys, China has also built berthing areas for large ships. Reuters reports that the 3,000 meter long runway on the Fiery Cross Reef will most likely be operational by the end of this year. The new report titled The Asia-Pacific Maritime Security Strategy was required by Congress ahead of the 2015 defense bill. China said in early August that it has halted its reclamation efforts in the island chain, although many countries question these claims. China building airstrip and disputed Spratly Islands. Recent satellite images show China is building its first airstrip in the disputed Spratly Islands and may be working on a second airstrip. China has been reclaiming land in the South China Sea on Fiery Cross Reef, which lies to the west of the disputed Spratly Islands, an archipelago that is claimed in whole or in part by China, the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Brunei. China began to turn the Fiery Cross Reef into an island in late 2014. Satellite images from February 6th showed substantial reclamation work with the structure on the western tip. On March 23rd, new imagery showed runway and apron construction additional construction on the western side, more changes to the terrain, and dredging activity. China has created enough space on Fiery Cross Reef 
for a runway that is about 3,000 meters long. People's Liberation Air Force runways in China range in length from about 2,700 meters to 4,000 meters. Other images taken in March showed reclamation work on Subi Reef that could also create space for another 3,000 meter runway. Subi Reef is only 25 kilometers away from T2 Island, known as Pagasan Tagalog, and which China calls Zhongye Island. T2 Island, which is held by the Philippines and has a civilian population, was singled out last year in the Chinese language publication Qianzhan, or Prospects, as an inevitable target of invasion by China. The U.S. sends Australia B-1 bombers as China continues to make claims in the South China Sea. The United States military is continuing its efforts to deter Chinese influence in the South China Sea. As China continues to boost its maritime territorial claims in the South China Sea through the construction of airfields and artificial islands, the U.S. is increasing its naval forces and air power in the region to assert the right of free passage. The U.S. military also plans to station B-1 strategic bombers and surveillance aircraft in Australia. The aircraft is able to quickly deliver 84,500-pound bombs anywhere in the world at any time and is currently being used to attack Islamic State in Iraq. The U.S. Defense Secretary stated that Global Hawks and F-35s would also be deployed in Japan, while the military would add to the stock of V-22s in the country. The U.S. says China's ambitions has a destabilizing effect in the region, while the Obama administration has voiced its position to assert freedom of navigation in the South China Sea. China's air-headed air defense zone pisses off the neighbors. China has declared an air defense identification zone over much of the East China Sea, including the disputed Diaoyutais. The move alters the status quo and conflicts with Japan and South Korea's own. The Chinese Defense Ministry has said that military aircraft must report a flight plan, maintain two-way radio communications, identify themselves, and respond in a timely and accurate manner. China says it will adopt defensive emergency measures in response to aircraft that do not cooperate or refuse to follow its lame and ridiculous instructions, which no one will agree to. China just wants to test the world. Its greed is boundless. It probably even has its eye on the new volcanic island that formed in Japanese waters last week. What do you think? Chinese naval vessels spotted off Alaska. The Pentagon confirmed that Chinese naval vessels were spotted sailing near Alaska for the first time. Five Chinese naval ships, including three combat ships, an amphibious ship, and a replenishment ship, were spotted in international waters near the Aleutian Islands in the Bering Sea off Alaska. Chinese naval vessels have been seen exercising across the globe over the past few years, including last year near Hawaii, the Sunda Strait, and the Spratly Islands. A spokesman said the Pentagon was aware of five People's Liberation Army Navy ships in the Bering Sea and respects the freedom of all nations to operate military vessels in international waters. Philippines accused China on Monday of having used water cannons on Filipino fishermen last month to drive them out of disputed waters in the South China Sea. On January the 27th, Filipino fishermen were fishing out of Panatag Shoal in the West Philippine Sea in an area the Philippines claims as part of its exclusive economic zone. The area, however, is also part of what China claims as its own exclusive economic zone. The Chinese Coast Guard approached the fishing vessel and started spraying it with a water cannon to drive it out of the disputed area. Since the start of the year, Beijing has required foreign fishing boats to seek approval before entering the waters that China claims as its own. U.S. Navy set to challenge China with close island pass. 
The U.S. Navy has signaled its intention to sail a surface ship close to Chinese artificial islands in the South China Sea to demonstrate Washington doesn't view the reclaimed land as sovereign territory. China claims almost the entirety of the South China Sea as its territory, a contested area extending deep into Southeast Asia. Here, China has been busy constructing artificial islands on submerged reefs and wants to enforce territorial no-go zones around this reclaimed land. Under the UN Law of the Sea Convention, a navy ship may pass within 12 nautical miles of territory without conducting military operations. This is known as innocent passage. The United States Navy plans to conduct such a move near the Spratly Islands to signal it doesn't recognize China's absolute claim on the area. China's South China Sea claim is also contested by Brunei, Malaysia, Vietnam, the Philippines, and Taiwan, countries whose 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zones overlap with China's claim. The U.S. says it wants to support free passage under international law. U.S. Pacific Fleet Commander Admiral Scott Swift said the U.S. does not recognize any of China's territorial claims. China demands U.S. plane turn away from South China Sea airspace. China's Navy issued multiple demands to a U.S. surveillance aircraft on Wednesday to leave the airspace over some islands in Southeast Asia's most dangerous flashpoint. A U.S. P-8A Poseidon aircraft was conducting a surveillance flight over reclaimed land islands China is building in the contested South China Sea. In response, China's Navy issued eight warnings and told the aircraft's pilots to turn away. At its lowest point, the Poseidon reached an altitude of 15,000 feet. Footage taken by the Poseidon shows construction activities on the island and Chinese Navy ships nearby. On Fiery Cross Reef Island, for instance, military barracks, a lookout tower and a runway have already been built. The U.S. is now considering pushing its aerial and surface missions closer to the islands. Until now, the U.S. has stayed outside the island's 12 nautical mile territorial zone. Some analysts warn the U.S. actions might escalate tensions in the region. The U.S. says China's grab for territory risks setting a precedent in which larger countries are free to muscle in on and intimidate smaller ones. China conducts first Air Force drills over the Western Pacific Ocean. China confirmed on Monday that its Air Force has carried out its first ever drill over the Western Pacific Ocean, a move that is likely to escalate tensions with its neighbors. Long-range bombers, likely to be the Xian H-6, were deployed for the drill. Modelled on the Russian Tu-16, the Xian H-6 measures 34.8 metres long and has a 33-metre wingspan. The Xian H-6 can reach a maximum speed of 1,050 kilometres per hour and is able to carry six cruise missiles. China's official Xinhua news agency reported that the aircraft passed through the Bashi Channel, a disputed area claimed by Taiwan and the Philippines. The exercise is likely to be viewed as a provocative act. China has been engaged in disputes with its neighbours over the sovereignty of the Paracel Islands, Scarborough Shoal and Spratly Islands in the South China Sea. In November 2013, China also unilaterally declared an air defence identification zone in the East China Sea. Some in the Japanese media believe China may soon announce a similar zone over the South China Sea. US pledges millions to equip Vietnam with patrol vessels. U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter pledged to expand U.S. military ties with Vietnam during a visit to Haiphong on Sunday, during the latest stop on his 11-day trip to Asia-Pacific. Taiwan, Vietnam and China have all reclaimed land in the South China Sea. However, China has outpaced the others by reclaiming around 2,000 acres of land according to U.S. estimates, raising concerns in the region. In the Spratly Islands, Taiwan, Malaysia, China and the Philippines have all constructed outposts, although Vietnam has the most, with 48 in total. US Defense Secretary Ash Carter toured a Vietnamese Coast Guard vessel that was damaged after being rammed by a Chinese vessel during a skirmish last year. After Carter's visit, the Pentagon pledged $18 million to Hanoi to buy Vietnam six aluminium metal shark patrol boats. The Pentagon has called for all countries in the region to halt their island-building efforts in disputed territories.